Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy So So, in case you ain't know so, and welcome back to another dope episode of Sports with So So. Coming to you live, y'all. This week, we got a winner for the Miami Golf Bros Open. The Panthers lose the first game of the second round, and we talk about what's next for the Heat. It's time to take a ride, y'all. Let's go. Yes, sir. We're back. We're back. Another episode. It's going down. Some things are different. A lot of stuff, you know, it's kind of the same. First, it's good to see you alive and well, my friend. Barely. But you're, <laughs> Barely. You're alive. alive. Yeah. Well, kind of <laughs> kind of well. Kind of, kind of not so well. Maybe like on the could 60. Could be better. Could be better. That's a uh, good one. Oh, uh, man. Uh, congratulations, first and foremost. Well, I appreciate uh, that, To sir. you and uh, the rest of your team on a phenomenal performance this weekend. You especially, 3-0. and Thanks, man. Yeah, what a that, performance. That's what I'm really proud of, Doc. You know what I mean? Should be. You yeah. should definitely be proud of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and thank you guys for tuning in to the Instagram and the YouTube, uh, uh, following us along on the Miami Golf Bros Open 2024. The little that we did post, right? Obviously, we want to save it's the funny. big review. I got hit up. I was like, uh, they hit me up, and I was like, uh, what happened? What happened day two and three? And, uh, you know, you posted everything up to day, you know, day one. And I was like, listen, man, when you're two days deep already into a golf trip, it, you know, it's just hard to even keep your phone charged at that point. Yeah, Let's yeah, just yeah. Put yeah. it that way. Yeah, yeah. No, we're <laughs> so, gonna have to come up with a a better system for score up, keeping up the score on the social media. Yeah, right? like we're yeah. gonna have to come up with something for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, thank you guys for subscribing to my boy's channel. If you haven't yet, make sure to do so. More importantly for both channels, make sure you guys hit the notification button because that's when you guys get notified when we drop the cool episodes, the cool, uh, cool ass interviews and the amazing golf trip that we just had. Uh, yeah, man, uh, the Miami Golf Bros 2024 Open, uh, 2024 Open, right, or Open 2024 at Innisbrook was amazing. That place is really, really accommodating, right? We were, we were deep. We were deep, dog. You know what? 24 heads, mm -hmm. right? And that's because we invited, like, what, 36 people? Probably. Some, some shit like that. It was a huge number. Yeah. Um, And that's that we weren't even the biggest group, right, out there. There was, like, two groups of 30s, and there was that one crazy group of, like, 46 dudes. Um, That place is really accommodating, dog. It's a massive resort, obviously, right? Tons of space. The rooms are really nice. Uh, plenty of space within the rooms, right? And plenty of places to go chill. You know, the restaurants are really good on there. Um, the service is impeccable. You know, you get driven to the golf range on time. You call the, you know, for a trolley, it's there in two minutes. Really excellent service, bro. And the fact that they, um, you know, let a, a bunch of heathens <laughs> like us in there, right, and do our thing. It was amazing, bro. So shout out to Innisbrook, man. Yeah, so much so. It's looking like we, we're probably going to go back, you know. We don't want to confirm it. Yet. I mean, obviously a lot can change from here to there, but, you know, especially the guys that have, this was their second time around where, you know, it was confirmed, reconfirmed, you yeah. know, like, yeah, this is, this is a great spot to do exactly what we want to do, which is hang out, party, and have nobody bother us, really. We, that, you know, we already know what to expect, so... Right. There's the unknown, the fear of the unknown now. If we go somewhere else, how strict are they going to be when 24 guys from Miami roll up? You know, everybody talking at the same time over each other, loud right, as hell, loud cracking as hell up, with the music, watching doors basketball. Doors slamming, <laughs> domino slamming, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, so we know Innisbrook, you know, they're they're totally cool with all that. So, you know, the new guys that first-timers on the trip, they loved it. They, they loved the experience. And the guys that, you know, were repeats, you know, were like, yeah, this is, this is the spot. You know, this is why we love coming here. For sure. So, and, and the golf courses, dog. Now we can talk about the actual golf right like the the golf courses there are amazing there's not one real bad green on that any bad greens really on that place at all um all the fairways are nice and kept they're green right um they really do keep it manicured i i, I could remember hitting at least like two drives right on some of the holes where you're kind of starting at the top and you're aiming down and it's not a crazy drop in elevation right but if you hit a ball that rolls that ball is going to keep rolling just like you see on TV at a real good golf course. That it, You hit the shot maybe 195 yards, but that drive comes out being 240 because it just rolled an extra 50 yards. That Those are things that are, A, 
not the norm for people who are are our stature right it's not like we're pl playing at pga courses all the time and spending 250 dollars 300 dollars to play somewhere right um we're trying to play a good amount of golf not just at, a, at amazing places every single time so to to get that type of i call it a, an advantage right because we are we're not used to getting that is really welcoming to a player of my level, right? And even a beginner, right? Who's saying, well, man, this is t such a tough course. True, but it, all you have to do is hit an okay shot. And if you put it on the fairway or if you put it on the green, you know you're gonna get a good look at something. The greens were fast, oh, faster yeah. than anything else that we've played down here in South Florida. I, I, at least for me, I, I know you played a, a couple of more places than I have. Friday was fast. Thursday, that warm up round at Crescent Lakes or Crescent Oaks or whatever was, you know, it was decent. The greens were tiny. Really difficult to even just get on the green in the first place, but so small. They they weren't that fast. Then all of a sudden you just kick it into overdrive on Friday at the first the opening round, which is the island course. Which last year I don't know if you remember, but last year leading up to Sunday, which is when we played mm -hmm. the island course, everybody was telling us like that that was either you know we heard feedback that it was either their their favorite of the three or over the hardest. Or even harder than the Copperhead. Right. And, you know, we saw it last year. And, I mean, you know, a lot of guys struggled. I, I don't know what happened. I guess I blacked out because I played really well. That did not happen this year. Um, you know, I, I didn't play as well as I did. But uh, the course was tough, 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 bro. Those those greens, if you landed it in the wrong spot, man, you, had, a, a and you had certain putts that you, there was just no leaving it close to the hole. Like, it was just going to keep rolling. A know? lot of greenside bunkers, too. Oh, yeah. A lot of green side bunkers. Everything. You know what I mean? So it was like either play safe or if you try to go for it, you're going to pay the price. Right. Um. And yeah, bro, that, that course kicked my ass. Like I hadn't shot a 60 something in a real long time, bro. A real long time. And on that back nine, I shot like a 62. And I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Why is this course so hard? Yeah, bro. It was tough. <laughs> it was narrow. You know, there's a, there was real tight. There's that one hole that I think everybody remembers, which was like, super tight like yes. just trees on this side trees on this side and it's like the whole hole it's far four long it's like really like i don't have any room for error i got to go dead straight here 300 yards yeah you know and and that was uh that was a tough one but all three of the courses are cool because they're all different yes you know what i mean like Very the island different. course was one thing it was like a kick in the teeth and then like you go to copperhead and that's even harder but it's a different format at least so like you know you're you, you have you can play off of somebody that day. Yep, that was a fun day. You and uh, Forte had a great round that day. So Bro, we balled, man. Shout out to you Forty, see, my partner. You know, anybody, you know, you guys, you guys can Jason have too. a day out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's why I said that part of the beginning, right? Where are you, you're not necessarily looking for the best shot of your life, right? You're just trying to put it in a in a safe zone, keep the ball in a safe zone, and that's gonna help you out a lot on that course, man. Um, Friday, I was dialed in though. After getting my ass kicked, I was dialed in. Me and Forty were just. You mean Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. Excuse me. Saturday, we were dialed in, and we were just hitting so many greens, dog, between the both of us. You That's know, the fire. short game was literally fire. I ended up sh telling Coach Sib, um, shout out to Coach. I ended up telling him like, bro, my, uh, you know, I, I didn't break a hundred at all this trip, right? But that's fine. I got really close on the last day, um, with the one hundred two. But I, I couldn't find the consistency and like the putting. And that's what I told you. I, I felt the most confident about heading into the tournament. And I found myself, dog, with my short game, which was the shit that I worked on the most probably. Like just being fucking dialed in, dog. I don't know how to explain it. That approach wedge was on fire. My best friend the entire weekend, bro. It's a good club, bro. It's an excellent club. And once you start to feel confident with a club like that and know your distances, I already... I can say this confidently now, right? That like I know what I'm doing when it comes to power and and the and the amount of power that I need in the swing, how far back I need to go. Like I feel like I have that feel ready. Oh, it's a sixty, boom. There was a point, dog, between Saturday and Sunday that I, I wasn't even checking. I just knew that if it was inside of a hundred, I'm grabbing that approach wedge and I'm going out there and I'm deciding, okay, what's the win? Where's the flag? All right, we're going a quarter swing, we're going half a swing, you know, full swing, whatever. On money, on the money, dog. That's fire. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I had any anything that was on the money this weekend, bro. It was a struggle. It was it was hard. It was it was it was hard in these streets for these uh for these kids, man. They're struggling, you know. They just want to be loved. Shot That's a seventy three on Sunday with the net. Yeah, you were third place, right? Yeah, yeah. I was phenomenal, bro. That's crazy. You had a great round that day. That's crazy, you know. That's but I crazy. saw it. I played with. You. I got to play with you on Thursday, bro. And yeah, you were yeah, hitting yeah. some shots crazy on Thursday, shots. so 
I haven't seen you here before. Yeah, yeah, that five iron to get on the green. That's for, one. That's for just Clay's one of them. Eagle. That's that just one was, of them. What a crazy hole that was! It was first just of all. so <laughs> memorable because of the fact that Clay followed it up. Yeah. Um. And then yeah, you just you, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Trip <laughs> and Clay, but yeah, no, like you were just hitting some shots, like even shots, some short man. game shots too. Like yeah, bro. That I was we really impressed with the contact you were making and the tempo you had. I was like, bro, you can tell he's been putting in the work, dog. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All you know, it is, literally, that's, that's, it. that's all it comes down to. Like, you can tell the difference of who put in the work before and who didn't. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the swingers, man, and everybody on the squad, bro. We we played a great tournament. We were really dialed in on Sunday, and the vibes were high, man. People survived the trip. You know, now the yeah. body is aching. Yeah. Now the bank account is way lower. A little um, lower. You know what I mean? Low. Not too low. <laughs> But it's just it's it's just the the re, you know recuperating oh, yeah. process now, yeah, my, bro. Yeah. My elbow is still like on fire, dog. No, I bet, I bet. It's no. probably because like holding up this metal it's, like it's this, it's heavy around your neck. And when I do this, that's what it is. That's stuck, exactly what it, it gets, is. It gets heavy, so I got to take the chain off. That. You just got to put it up in the yeah, mantle. I'm gonna take the chain off. It's, it's too it's, heavy. It's killing me. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. Sure. Oh, you Damn, just heard dog. You, heard, you couldn't even hear that on the mic. I heard it clink. <laughs> the clink. Yeah. Uh, Can't wait yeah. to get another one. It's gonna be fun, man. Next year, you know, you already know the deal, though, bro. Next yeah. year, no team. Yeah, no team. Next We're back to the, the normal shit, right? Well, I mean, to the year of the individual again. So it's gonna be, you know, three days, three rounds. I just gotta work and keep my handicap in that same range. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't want to start sandbagging yeah, okay, now. Okay. No, 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 no. You don't uh, want to get hit with those accusations, which is so crazy, <laughs> so crazy that we even talked about it off the air, dog. And we're not gonna talk oh, about it on the air. No, nah, uh, but I, we just gotta we gotta make it even better next year, bro. That's it, man. You know, and and I think that's the really cool shit about the entire group of guys that we normally play golf with. Your group, my group, and the group that we share, right? Um, everybody pretty much uses the grit, so you get to see like what's the progress looking like, or at least where your own personal progress is. And, and I don't think I told you this, but on fr on Sunday. I think out of the 14 or 13 fairways, bro, I ended up hitting like six or seven. That's nice. So I was like at 46% fairways. That's amazing. Amazing. Which obviously helps lead to the success, you know? Yeah, bro. So yeah, I was really happy with that, bro. And that's just working on the game, working on the game. And now we're going to try to break 100 consistently, man. That's the, but that's the goal. This, I have to thank you and Jason and the rest of our sponsors, bro, because those guys absolutely showed out, bro. Golf Garage, um, 3D Pop. Who else? Um, uh, what's the head cover? Hatch. Hatch. Sick ass head cover. That was Kraken. fucking two places away from winning. Uh, uh, but yeah, you know, those, those uh, and even HQ Golf Dog, this guy, I don't know how he outdoes himself every year, but he finds a way to outdo himself. And you got, and you too. Dog. Look at this polo, y'all. Look at this raw ass polo. Man. You like, that? you like the hat? Yeah, bro. Everything. Everything looks awesome amazing bro everybody was so stoked yeah. when that goodie bag came out and saw everything you guys had for us the cookies frankie's mom hooking yeah. up with the cookies the which cookie were delicious fire. my girl ate 75 percent of it <laughs> um so yeah dog, it, it, and it imagine was, now we got to find a way to outdo ourselves how do y'all do it but we have already talked about some extra things that we're gonna do because it's the fifth year anniversary i've already shared with you some of my ideas of what I, what i'm gonna personally contribute um besides the stickers and whatnot but but yeah dog we're gonna we're gonna do it big for for the next one for sure bro hopefully it's a huge group i'm hoping we get 30 heads out there dog for the fifth year get some of the the ogs back from like the first trip you know what i'm saying or guys that haven't been able to make it for two years like keep it in fours though uh, so 28 or 32 but 32 yeah. let's go 32 heads 32 then. it's oh yeah real talk we can do it it's possible because we invited more than 32 people to the to this yeah, tournament of right it's an open. I'm going to have to do that presidential suite, though. We're going to have to end up factoring we that We got to see what it looks like at this point. No, what it's going to be is it's going to be like we're just going to rent that to party. Everybody, like, hey, so everybody that's sleeps in their spot. own room. But like instead that's of like partying spot. in one person's room, that's going to be the room where we all hang out and party at. You know, I think that's a great idea. Everybody splits that room. It's like, I don't know, 800 bucks a night. Or some shit like that. You just divide about 24 or 30 guys. Add yeah. it to the room Ex shit. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. We'll figure that out, but uh, damn, now we got to wait a whole nother year, a bro. A whole nother year, though. But that means we get to play a lot of golf. No, I'm not golfing. That. No, I'm not yeah, golfing are, for a while. We're going to play in about two weeks. Uh, I'm done golfing for you a while. You and I are going to play in about two weeks. We're going to set it up done. for the end of the month. Super done. Just you're a like, liar because you just got a brand new bag. So unless you're going to put that shit. bag fucking away. That told me shit. It's a great decoration in the oh, office. Oh, yeah, Look, for sure. Like all my other decorations in here. It's just <laughs> going to sit dust. there and collect dust. That's exactly right, bro. Nah, man. Nah, man. We're going to get out there, dog. We're going to get out there. Um, you know, 
we got to talk about the Panthers and their run and give the people an update because we were waiting forever over about over six days. I think it was exactly six or seven days to find out who our opponent was going to be because Boston and, and Toronto went to, you know, seven games. And I think that that time off, while it kind of allowed the Panthers to get healthy, it also took away some of their momentum, right? Because they weren't in that competition or battling night in, night out, night sure. in, night out. Sure. And then you go heading into game one against a, a good Boston team. We know it's a good Boston team, right? Because obviously they were ahead of the league and ahead of the division for a long time or most of the season. And they had, um, you know, they, they had came out with some fire because they won game seven in overtime and won it in dramatic fashion and had to make the comeback at, at home. So they came in with a lot of energy and the Panthers couldn't match it. They couldn't match the energy. And, and, that, and I could see it in the first period, right? Because as I'm watching the game, the Panthers started off really hot. Obviously, right? They're fresh. They, they got tons of energy. They had about seven goal shots on goal before the Boston Bruins got their first. And I was like, man, these guys are being aggressive. I like it. You know, they're trying to put everything on, on the goalie to see if they can find something early. But they had at least three opportunities, real good looks at the goal. And, and some would say a net net, right? Because if the goalie's facing this way and the puck's already moving that way, all you have to do is really tap it in. There's Not that it's impossible, but the reaction time has to be like, Bro, 0. 0.0001, right? To get from here to there that quickly to stop a puck going 70 miles per hour, right? The Panthers just couldn't capitalize on none of them. None of them. And even when they got the first power play, they didn't even get a shot on goal after about the first 30 seconds. They got a shot on goal real quick off the faceoff. And then after that, the rest of the power play couldn't get anything. And then they gave up a power play, but thankfully they killed it. Then in my mind, I'm thinking, well, Boston's going to come out and say, well, these guys are not ready. We're still in form. Let's go out there and put the pressure on them. It didn't really work because the Panthers scored first in the in the second period. Matthew Kachuk, excellent shot on insane, goal. Insane, insane goal. Insane shot right inside. Like, <laughs> like beat the goalie inside his post is really yeah. hard to do. You know, that, that puck must have been traveling 130 at least, right? Mm -hmm. Because it covered so much distance so quickly. An amazing goal. But you can check it out on my Instagram stories. Um but yeah, dog, like uh, that's when I felt like we had the momentum. And it came off of like kind of a broken play, right? Yep. It was a turnover. It, it was a turnover and it was just kind of bang, bang real quick. And it was like, we're on the board first. This is amazing. This is what we wanted. We're right. at home, which by the way, the fact we got the home ice advantage is kind of crazy. It Huge. came down to the last game of the season. I didn't even realize that. Yes. I thought they had home ice. And then I see where else we're playing in Sunrise. I'm like, yep. how did this happen? And then they were talking about it on the broadcast yep. a little bit. It literally came down to the last game of the season. Uh, and well, one point difference. But that's why the regular season matters. But you know, the other foreshadowing. thing foreshadowing. Yeah, of course. You know, but then the announcers were also talking about it being a low scoring game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They were like, these two teams, you know. They're going to battle. It's going to be a low-scoring series altogether. You know, we shouldn't expect that many goals. Well, boom, right when they say that, 10 minutes into the second period, we score, and we're on a high horse thinking, all right, this is great. This is what we wanted. Bro, was it even a minute later? It was less than a minute. Like 50-something seconds? 48 seconds. Same exact thing that happened to us. They on an off Stupid a turnover. turnover. Stupid turnover. A guy that barely scores for them. Yeah. And he just finds, you know, the back of the net and finds the equalizer immediately as soon as we, we just took the lead. I think that was that, his uh, first playoff goal, um, the gentleman who scored that goal. So, I'm trying to see his name. I think it was like Chucky or some shit Something like that. Like I, that. I forgot what it was. Zaki, Taki, I don't remember. Something like that. But He's anyways, a loser, dog. No, I'm kidding. No, nah, bro, but, you know, so then it was like, all right, all good. We had one. We're back to even then. You know, no doubt. But, bro, the rest of that second period got ugly quick. No, we got dominated. We got dominated. After that turnover, it felt like Boston flipped the switch in their brains to say, oh, we can do this. Yeah. We're in it. They're still finding out a way to put it together. We're in it. And immediately after that goal, guess what? Another goal. And it's like, fuck, dude. The, the goals couldn't happen fast enough. Fast enough for Boston. And it's not like Bobrovsky played bad. Absolutely not. They were just bringing the pressure. They left them out to dry on t on both of those goals, especially the first one, right? Because it was a, t a terrible turnover in their own half of the ice with, a, 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 there were, I think, three players past the blue line. When we gave up the puck, it was only one guy actually in position to skate back. And the other defender, I think it was Ekblad, was on the already on the other side of the ice. So he had to like try to even hustle back to cut off the center of the ice. And by that time, it's too quick. It's too late. 
Because you're giving an NHL player a good look at a goal, and he's going to make it. You know, he's not going to mess around and miss. It really hurt us. And they scored three goals in that second period, and they never looked back. No. They never looked back. <clears throat> we couldn't claw back, bro. That's well, something that we're norm- you know, normally accustomed to doing, and we just couldn't, we couldn't stop the bleeding. And, and yeah, that game got away from us quick. And, yeah, it was Quickly. easy to point to that, you know, the time off. You know, oh, you have, you know, time off. But it's like, I don't know. It's just one of those double-edged swords things, too. Because, you know, yeah, they've yeah, they just finished playing a series 48 hours before. <laughs> so they're still in that moment and that and all that. But they could also have been tired of having to travel on short notice to South sure. Florida as well. You know, I could play against them. So it's like, you have enough time to rest. It, it's just, you, you had one bad game. Now let's let's get back to the drawing board. Now we know we have to steal one of those two, if not both of the ones that we play over in there. Boston, though. To get back into the series. And, and, and protect home ice, right? Yeah. Because you guys got it for a reason. And, you know, when you look back, you can say, all right, Boston won the game for sure, but the Panthers also stumbled the game away. Because normally when the Panthers go up, they don't give up leads. They don't give up leads. They'll either tie the game up and then the Panthers will go back up and whatever happens, right? Rare other times, and those are the losses that we saw earlier on in the season where they would go up and then a team would come back. But they dominated the ice. They dominated the amount of shots, even shots on goal. Um, you know, faceoffs won, power plays, uh, takeaways, all of that. All of that. All of that. But what do they not? They The stat you don't want to lead in if you're the Panthers? Penalty minutes. 24 to 18. That's an extra six minutes the Bruins had on the ice to attack us, attack us, attack us, and play their physical style. And it's much easier for them to play their physical style of hockey when it's five on four than it is five on five. And we can't play our speed game when it's five on five or we're down a man, right? And he, and I think they got a shorty too, dog, if I'm not mistaken, a shorthanded goal where they were on a penalty and they still scored or right or coming right off the penalty, I think, when they tied it. It's a, it's, it, it was a troubling game. The good thing is they get a chance to bounce back, right? And figure it out and say, all right, now we're in a, now we're in a series, a real series. We took care of Tampa Bay quite easily and we didn't really have to turn it up until game three, four and five, right? Now the Panthers going into the next game on Wednesday, by the time you guys are hearing this tonight at 730, they have to know they got to come out early and often with the punches to the mouth. Oh, yeah. Er, not a knockout punch, but early and often with the no, punches you, to the mouth, get a goal within that first period, stack it in the second period, and then do the same thing in the third period. They got to they gotta come gotta out score. swinging. Yeah. Every they gotta period. got to come out swinging. And no, first period, bro. Out the gates, we got to do something, you know. And, and at the same time, we got to make sure we, we don't try to do too much. You know what I mean? Like, get, yeah. like, panic. It's not the time to panic. No. We're a great team. We're here for a reason. So... Yeah. Let's focus on the task at hand, which is winning this game and set the tone. I mean, you know, reset the tone. How do you do that? Go out there, score early, score often. Yeah. And, and look, you have to give credit where credit is due, right? Jeremy Swayman, the goalie for, for Boston, played lights out. Lights out. That dude made a bunch of good saves, really good high caliber saves, which again, in this N- day of NHL, it's not easy. Their equipment's a lot smarter, and, uh, smaller, and these guys are much better offensively, so... Yeah, you're going to get scored on. It's just a matter of how much, right? Uh, but for this dude to face a high-powered offense that's led by a Kachuk, uh, Verhage, uh, Sam Reinhardt, all these guys that we can name, and go out there and play a really good game of 60 minutes, you got to give, you know, you got to tip your hat to this gentleman and say, all right, this guy was on point tonight. Yeah. Not, that, not to say that Big Bog was off, because I said the defense <laughs> let him out to dry yeah. a lot of times. He got bombarded. You know, and he got bombarded. So as, as a goalie, that's not that's not really on you. Um, but Wednesday night, Wednesday night, the, the Panthers got a chance to even the series up. Um, I expect them to win, and I'm sure they they all feel the, the 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 pressure to win. But we have to know that they have to know that the the city and the and the state is really behind them, right? Because that place was loud, it was rocking. Even when we were losing three to one, you still you still heard the fans chanting, you still heard the fans in it, cheering the team on, trying to get them in it. I and did that hear a couple of Bruins chants in there. I'm not of course, they, those teams travel, bro. They're old school. You know what I mean? They travel, dog. But. But we were we were we were putting that help towards the to the Panthers, right? The fans did their job. Keep doing that job Wednesday night, and and let's tie this series up. You yes, know sir. I mean? Get back to business. Yeah, we got we got work to do. It's Stand time. on it. We got we got we got some work to do. We got to get that Stanley Cup. Yes, sir. That's the move. Um, okay. Now we reached that point of the the episode where we got to talk about the Heat. 
And although it sucks, right, we get bounced in five games to a much better Boston team, even though we're without Jimmy and Rozier and Duncan really wasn't available and blah, 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 but we still lost. And I don't know if we, even if we had all those guys, it would have been such an easy victory for the series, right? Now we have to look ahead and say, what's next? Mm. And, and, and that's where a lot of the comments that were made between yesterday and the day before are kind of critical. And it lets you know, like, more importantly, how Pat is looking at the things, right? Because whether you like it or not, whether you like Pat Riley or don't like Pat Riley, where you think he's been a success or not, if he's losing it or if he still has it, he's the one at the end of the day that's going to be in charge of making the decisions for the immediate future. That's not changing. So for him to come out and question Jimmy's ability to play games, question Hero's ability to play games in the regular season. That's big because what I think he's doing, you know, and this is just my opinion. This is just my opinion. What I think he's doing is trying to set the standard again. Like, hey, yeah, we've made finals. We've been about the playoffs and da, 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 da. But we're not about that eight seed shit. We're not about that play and shit. And we just went back to back. And that's a message to the players and to Spo, right? To be to 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 reiterate to these guys, we are building success here. We can't build championship level success being a six, seven, eighth seed. That's not the way it works in the NBA. There's a reason why those teams that are in those positions hardly ever win anything, let alone a championship. So, yeah, the fact that we made it as an eighth seed is that one in 100 million. Right. Right? <laughs> it's the exception, not the rule. Exactly. So, we can't point to that and be like, oh, you're the Jimmy run. Right. No, that shit's going to go down in NBA fame as its own. Right? Where a guy carried a team that wasn't supposed to be there all the way there. He did it twice. Right? Did it in the bubble, too. Yeah. Under different circumstances, but yes. Right? So, those are separate things. That leads to us looking at the team and reevaluating it. How good is this team? Is it top four? I would say yes, but everybody has to play to their ability. And like I said in last week's episode, I don't think that the bench right now is at the same level that it's been the norm, quote unquote, for the last three seasons, right? Where you could point to the bench. No, no, just point to the bench, right? Let's not look at the main pieces just yet because the main pieces haven't changed, right? But when you look towards the bench and you can say, coño, killer, 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 and those people are doing in that work. At first it was Duncan. Duncan was coming off the bench and being crazy with the threes and blah, 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 earned his way into the starting lineup. Blah. Then it was Hero. Hero's on the bench. This guy is balling, sixth man of the year, killing it, killing it. Got hurt. Coño, I killed us. Then last year, Coño, Gabe Vincent and Struz, these boys are doing their thing. Look how much they're improving. Bah, 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 bah. This year, there was a big drop off on the production that we got from the bench as a unit. And, and, and I think that's what really killed the heat the most. Because if you look at Jimmy's numbers, they're solid, right? Solid when, as hell. When he was available. When he was available. Look at Bam's numbers. Solid. 20 and whatever season, 20 and 12 season, like, pff, come on. That's the base that we're asking of this guy, right? And he's checking that off with these. You look at Hero, average 20 points a season yet again. So on the, on the surface, it looks like it's winning. But then when you look at the, the product itself, that's where you realize, all right, the Heat are in trouble because we don't have a superstar. I love Jimmy, but he's not a superstar. Right? He's not a takeover games type guy. Right? Not that he can't, but if you rely on it too much offensively, it may be a 50 50 thing more than a 75 25 thing. That's all I'm saying. Then you look at the next level with Bam, and that guy hasn't jumped out the box to do anything drastic in a long time. Just shows you that he's a capable helper. Not necessarily a guy who is second in command can take over when there's a player out. And then when you look at Hero, Hero was supposed to be the guy who can consistently contribute 
offense on a regular. And he hasn't been able to do that. So we see the third best player on the team not being able to be the third best player on the team. We see the second best player on the team not being able to take over, right, of being the first best player on the team. And then you have the best player on the team not being available or a majority of the season then getting hurt in the playoffs. That's a problem because there's a lot of money committed to those three players. Mm -hmm. And that affects how the bench is built and the rest of the rotation. So what what do you think? I mean, obviously there's something missing, bro. There's a lot it's missing. Plain as day, we, we're we're missing pieces. Big time. Right? What what do you say immediately is point guard, point guard. And even though we have Rozier on the, on, on the so, on the roster, so I just want to. I, I just looked up here. Who are the best upcoming NBA free agents? So mm -hmm. you mentioned point guard. I'm gonna throw out a couple of names here, and you let me know if these are guys that the Heat would even consider going mm -hmm. after. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Jose Alvarado. No. Malik Beasley. No. Pat Bev. Maybe. Bruce Brown. Mm, doubtful. KCP. No. DeMar DeRozan. Possibly. Spencer Dinwiddie. No. Chris Dunn. No. Markel Fultz. Possibly. James Harden. Possibly, even though I would hate it. Buddy Heald. Possibly, because he's cheap. Uh, Tyrese Maxey, he's going to be a restricted free agent next that year. That guy's not going anywhere. I don't think so either. Uh, Malik Monk. Mm, worth a look. Gary Payton the second. No. Josh Richardson. No. Who already plays for us. Clay Thompson. That's interesting. Lonnie Walker. Russell That's Westbrook, interesting. No. Aaron Wiggins. The, the, there's nobody going to be on that list that's not as interesting as, as Clay Thompson, right? Because we all know he's an incredible talent. A lot, lot of people, a lot of people say him. he's washed, and a lot of people think he's washed because of the injury. But if you if you talk to a heat lifer or somebody who just fucking eats, sleeps, and drinks, being heat fanatical fan, that person's gonna say, "Well, pff, culture fixed that guy right up." And right now, we only use that culture shit when it's a convenience to us, <laughs> right? Right when it's a convenience <laughs> to us in the sense of, "Oh, should we keep this player? Should we go after this player?" Can we fix this player? Is this player any good? It all comes down to the word culture and what the culture can do for that. <clears throat> I don't. I don't see any other notable free agents. No, it's, they're not out there, bro. Le LeBron, the, the, you no, know, man. is going to be the most notable free agent this the, year. The player that we need to take over, right? The player that we need to take over is not on this team, and it's not going to be able to be a player that we assign, we acquire via free agency. I, I can't tell you for certain who who could be the guy because it has to. It, that all depends on what we're willing to give up. Okay, in a perfect world, though, who would you want the guy to be? Who who would you think would be the guy that can take the core pieces that we have to the next level and add, you know only add to that unit? Bro, if if I'm being honest, man, I think the type of player that we need, dog, is a real a real point guard, dog, a real point guard, dog. And I don't know if we have the ability to go get a real good point guard, right? Um, Halliburton would be raw, but he plays for Indiana, right? Um, I don't think he's going anywhere either. No. Mike Conley would be amazing, amazing, but he's playing for fucking Minnesota who's out there kicking the shit out of Denver, right? Jamal Murray, amazing would be here, but like, yeah. What about Donovan Mitchell? I'd say same thing, but he's not really a, a, a point guard. Like I, I mean, like we need a point a guard. True, in the, pure point guard. Pure point guard. Feed, feed, feed. Defend, defend, defend. Feed, feed, feed. Defend, defend, defend. Because if you look at Bam Ryan and say, "Well, no, Konya, why isn't this guy scoring more?" Because there's not a real good ball handler on the team who can roll pick and rolls with this guy or set Bam up every single time to get to his spot where he needs to be. Tyler Hero could probably shoot better if he wasn't the one, right, picking and choosing where he shoots the ball. If it was somebody picking and choosing for him on the floor. Even the same thing for Jimmy, dog. Like, every, everything gets better on this Miami Heat team immediately. Immediately with a real good point guard. That's a fact. You've been saying this years. Because we could survive and have been surviving without the quote-unquote big man. That's the second part, right? We sure. need somebody next to Bam. But it looks like Jovic can... Can kind of resemble that, right? For being as young as he is, he can hit the three. He's he can play some defense. He's blocked a couple of shots in the playoffs. He blocked a, he's been playing more, so he's picking up that heat profile of, of playing, right? 
So he can potentially be a, a solution there. But if we're talking about what this team like desperately needs, it's a point guard. Not necessarily a, a scoring point guard, but a, a, a setup guy, you know, a setup guy. And that's why I mentioned those names. You know, like even a Kyrie Irving, who's who looks at some people probably look at him and say, God, oh, but this guy's a scorer, right? But realistically, it, it's that he, what he is is a distributor. He's a guy who controls the ball. He's a guy who dominates the ball and sets other guys up. So when it's his turn to take over, he can do that. But when it's time to get these next four or five guys, each six points, if not more, then he does that. That's why I like a guy like Kyrie Irving. Yeah, Kyrie's nasty, bro. What do you mean? He's going to change the game. He can take over. He can He's take over, can take right? Over. He can take over. A guy like, even like, that's why we wanted Dame so bad. Because he can pass the ball and get other guys involved. And then when it's time for him to say, Konya, it's, it's time to, to take some threes. Here comes the threes. Boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom. And then he makes a couple and people start, he starts drawing That's guys it. off the, the middle. Threat. And he's able to he's the threat. more. Kyrie's the threat of the offense. But realistically, he's a hardcore point guard. Jamal Murray is, is one of those guys, right? Right. He's a threat offensively, but realistically, he's going to kill you the most when he's setting everybody else up. Hey, bro, but the Nuggets right now are getting dogged. Yeah. Yeah, they are, bro. Yeah, they How are, man. that series? Yeah, I they are. I can't believe what's going on there. I mean, it's not surprising, bro. Is Anthony Minnesota Edwards... Minnesota going to take it? Probably. 100%. You're up to zip on, on the fucking defending champions. And you're heading home. What? What? They look good, you bro. You got three chances at home to get another two wins. They look That real looks good. real doable for that Minnesota team, especially with how Anthony Edwards is playing. They won that game without Gobert even playing, dog. That's Shout out to him having a baby. That's what I was going to say, too. Well, he got hurt, too, prior to that, right? Yeah, he yeah, but he was going to play that game. They and just didn't know, like, when he was going to miss. But he's, he's kind of been a little bit of a factor. He was in that first Huge game, especially. Factor. So, Huge factor. Yeah, if, he, uh, if he's good and he plays, you know, these guys are looking good. Ant, Ant is just looking unreal. That kid, man. We could use a kid like that, bro. And everybody, could you, who the hell are you telling me? <laughs> and everybody's fucking comparing the, or showing like the comparisons to Mike going Wade. And it's like, that's what the Heat need. Yeah. But we were blessed to have D Wade, bro. I don't know. I, again, like I said earlier, you know, I don't know if we can f get that point guard. I don't know if we can get that guard who says, I'm going to come out here and average nine assists, eight assists. Toma. Oh, you guys need 20 points? Bah, 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 bah. Here we go. Oh, all of you guys are off. I'm taking over. We need that. Yep. I don't know what it's gonna take, and we'll do a breakdown as the as the rest of the offseason unfolds after the Olympics, and we see what shakes and moves are off of that. But I don't. What's it gonna take? Are we trading Jimmy? Are we trading Bam? Are we trading Hawkes? Are we trading Jovic? Are we Pat? Pat picks. Said, Pat said he's not trading Jimmy. You know, but then he also did say. He didn't understand why Jimmy was making comments if he's he, not going to be on the floor. Well, he, well, he really so, meant, you know, what he really meant is that he doesn't want to trade Jimmy, mm. but he will if he has to. Facts, right? And what does that mean? Is that a rebuild? Are we getting a, a younger superstar? Like, what's the deal here? How how does that even work? Like, and we and we can name free agents to the death of us or players that are on teams to the death of us. But until we figure out what that situation really looks like, whether they're going to extend them or not, we're going to be waiting until June, whatever that date is, June like 14th. So we're, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. But yeah, man, um, the Heat, they got a lot of questions, not a lot of answers. So <laughs> no. Let's see. Let's see. Shout out to the Marlins. They've been winning some baseball games. They've won a couple. We're still Here starting, and there. but you know. They're, they're, Here and there. Yep. Here and there. But um, yeah, you know. We won't talk about them too much. Nah. They traded Luis Arrares in case you haven't been sleeping on the rock. That's he, why we haven't been. We've we'll, been protesting them. Exactly. And we'll wait till they start winning some games. So yeah. they're respect but you know game. what you can do? You can tell a friend. To tell a friend. To tell another friend. To tell everybody they know. To tell everybody they know. To make sure they're subscribed to our channels. Make sure they're hitting the like, dropping comments. And most importantly, y'all, hit that notification button so you guys get notified when we drop hits like this. Until next time. Peace. peace.